Yeah, unmute. It's like the story of the 2021 and two. Um, welcome everyone to the next session of the Marketplace Conference. I'm Georgie Smallwood. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Tier Mobility. And Tier Mobility is the largest micro mobility company in Europe in over 160 cities, uh, also across the Middle East, um, with the highest penetration of vehicles uh, in Europe as well, which is awesome. I joined a year ago from N26, where I was the CPO. And I really joined because I want to be part of a company that's building products that are changing things for how people are going to do things in the future. So I'm really excited to be on board. And I'm also really excited to work with amazing investors uh, like the team. And uh, when they approached me about the Marketplace Conference, um, you might ask, okay, Tier Mobility, why is this person talking about marketplaces? Well, my opinion and my background is that everything it can be a marketplace. Um, and I'm going to talk you through a little bit of my, my thinking and my logic and how I, how I look at companies and how I look at products and businesses and, and how I structure teams uh, around that premise. So you might ask why, um, what qualifies me to really talk about marketplaces? Well, um, when we think about what a marketplace is and we think about the last 15 years where marketplaces have kind of boomed globally. We really started in classifieds and that's also where I started my career. So I started my digital career at a company called REA Group in Australia. They are a property classifieds business. Um, they own companies in, in Asia as well as Australia. They also own places in Italy. There were also a couple in Europe. Um, and we really specialized in, in property marketplaces. Um, I then moved into uh, working in Asia with them and setting up property portals across China and Hong Kong. Um, I also worked with companies like iProperty, very similar vein, as you can see, Catcher Digital uh, that had different classified verticals like cars, um, dating, things like that. And then I came to Germany uh, to be part of the IPO at Scout24, uh, which is the biggest classifieds business, I think, in Europe at the time, uh, and we IPO'd that successfully. It was the only tech IPO in Europe in 2015, which was really successful uh, looking into the automotive and the property verticals. So this is really where kind of the marketplace phenomena started, which was taking existing businesses that were offering services and really connecting them through the internet to the consumers. And, and building that out is something that I've done, I did for 12 years. And so what you got to know when you work in, in classified marketplace businesses is this real obsession with these two people, right? the customer and the consumer. Um, what's great about working in, in marketplaces is you get a really, really thorough understanding in consumer journey because really you need to understand that consumer because you're not only selling your business to them, but you're also selling your customers business to them, which really kind of gets you to understand, right, how are we going to take this on a journey? How are we taking what the customer is offering and really showing the consumer where it fits in with their consumer journey so that they can get the most value out of that product possible? So really what you end up with is this connector, right? So as a marketplace, you become the connector in between the customer and the consumer. And it seems quite simple. But as that grows and grows, what you realize is that you can't just be the connector and you're in a really, really unique position because you've got this really great cycle where the customer is has this product that they've probably had for quite a long period of time or they've been selling it in a different way. You're providing a marketplace so that the consumer can see that product. They then purchase that product through the marketplace and then the revenue goes back to the customer. This is fantastic. And what you really mm. want to do is own the consumer relationship in this, in this situation because you want to move that really from the customer so that you can add more value to the customer and you can be charging a, a, a price for the value that you're offering the customer and you can also charge a price for the value that you're adding to the consumer. Traditionally, marketplaces only customise the customer only monetize the customer side of the business. But that also can change over time as well. Now, we talked a lot about classifieds businesses, and it's not just classifieds. As we talk about this as a marketplace or conference, right, it is really, really booming. Um, and so let's look at the next company that I joined, which was Zero. 
And zero is also a marketplace. It's just not a classifieds marketplace. On one side of the coin, you have the accountants, right? And they have been providing accountancy services for hundreds of years um, in, in very similar ways, bookkeeping, accountancy, really providing options for businesses of all sizes to scale, right, and to, to run their companies effectively. Then you have small businesses and small and medium-sized businesses who need accountants and bookkeepers to really run their businesses. In the age of digital, there became an opportunity for value to be made in the middle, right? And that's where Zero came along. Zero is like, right, we want to connect this. We not only want to make, we want to make it easy for businesses to be set up. People don't start small businesses so that they can stay up at night and do bookkeeping. So we're going to provide some tools for them in the value and we're going to connect them with the accountants to make sure that really we can complete that full circle. So very, very similar to the classifieds marketplace here. So you've got the customer on one side is the accountant. They're paying for the services. On this side, you also have the small business who is the consumer, but they're also paying for the services. So great marketplace model. Now, the interesting bit comes when you have proven value to your customer and your consumer and you start to build out what I call secondary value. Now, all great marketplaces have secondary value, right? So what secondary value is, is something that the marketplace can offer the consumer or the customer in addition to the connection through the marketplace. So if we think about zero on the accountant side of things, you need tooling. And so what Zero did an amazing job of was partnering with the accountants to digitize their accountancy services, to educate them in different ways that companies were starting and, and different processes that were happening in the industry. Um, they really started to bring accountants into the 21st century as far as digital economy was concerned. Um, they built products like Digital Conversation. So they built into their interface an ability for the accountant to connect in real time with the small business. So they're really providing all of these values, which make the accountant's life so much easier. Now, all of these things are add-ons, right? They're secondary value. They're secondary to the real reason or the primary reason why the accountant joined Zero in the first place. They joined to really have that interface to connect with the customer. And then you can have different tooling on top of that to help the accountants with their day-to-day -day existence. Now, on the consumer side, you can also do that as well. So the small business joins Zero because it's a small business accounting platform. They need the tax product. They need the invoice product. But also what they did was they built an ecosystem of apps. So the consumer has a whole store where they can join and they can add other companies into the Zero ecosystem. So what Zero did a really, really good job of driving virality through creating an open API with other companies like invoice to go or um, Expensify. And actually small businesses can plug Expensify and invoice to go into the zero system, right? So they're adding a different value, secondary value to that consumer. And this is really, really important, right? Because this is where you can start to be exponential in your growth of a marketplace. If we go back to the property portal, Property portals essentially take a, a real estate agent that has listings. They then put them on the platform for a price and they, you know, the price changes depending on how much you, how high up or how big the picture is going to be. And the consumer absorbs that information only to rent, buy or share a property. But the secondary value that property portals give are agent tools, are advertising the agency on behalf of the um, on behalf of the customer. So you can really build out different things. We built things like API uploaders so that a real estate agent could upload, you know, as many listings at a time as they wanted, because otherwise they had to click one link, one link, one link. So you build out all these tools, which make their life easier, providing secondary value. And it's another revenue line that you can charge for. On the consumer side of things, we had a media business, right? Because we knew that when people applied for mortgages, they also bought cars, went on holidays, did other things. So we had a media business, which provided ads for relevant, but secondary value. 
We also had things like um, holiday rentals and conveyancing options because when you buy a house, you need a lawyer. So we had listings for that. So we're providing secondary value there on the real estate side of things. You're getting my you're getting my drift here. Mm. So one of the things that I uh, really thought about was okay, this is a clear marketplace, and REA was a clear marketplace, and I understand there's a customer, there's a consumer. So, but how does everything become a marketplace? Because actually, you don't always have it's not always that clean, and you don't always have secondary verticals, and and you can draw out your revenue lines in one single page. And so when I was talking to the guys at Speed Invest, I was saying, you know, oh, yeah, in my background, we worked in marketplaces. And, and then I started to explain how I thought about tier because in joining tier, I was like, OK, this is definitely a B2C business, right? We are tier. We provide a transport product to consumers. They consume that product. We drive, we get revenue. We can provide more value to consumers. Right? So very, very clear. And often we think about products in this way. But once you get into organizations, you very, very quickly realize that there is a lot of complexity on the other side. Right. So think of any company that you want. Facebook. Right. So Facebook has this enormous consumer side of things, but they also have a customer side. They have an advertising business. They have uh, content listings. They have small business. They have all of this, all of these customers on this side. And in Tia, I was like, OK, but I don't have an external customer. Right? I don't have have someone that I'm kind of taking their product and then I'm selling it to the consumer. But when I looked through and I got to know the business really well, I understood that we had quite a lot of customers, actually. So if you think about everything as a marketplace and you think about, right, I am the, the value in the middle, right? I am, I'm the person that is taking something and giving it to that person and making sure they understand the value of it. So what is, that, what is it that I'm giving? Well, in Tia, we have three major customers. We have a lot more, but three major ones. The first one is the city, right? So we are work, walking into a world where more and more cities are licensed for vehicles, which is a very good thing, right? It raises the bar. It raises safety. Um, it means that you have to adhere to a certain amount of compliance and safety requirements, which is really important when you're trying to be a pioneer in a transport industry. You can't just like go crazy. So this is great. But it does mean that your total addressable market is completely constrained by how much the city is going to allow you to penetrate. So let's take uh, Vienna, for example. Vienna is a city. They have a license. You can tender and you can bid for that license and you win that license if you're tier. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then you can get, say, it's 5,000 vehicles, right? So actually, we need to take that, that license, right, that, that, that city customer, and we need to show that value to the consumer, right? So we need to win that customer, which is the city, um, so that we can provide that service to consumers. Tier operations. One of the things about tier that's really, really critical and really important to who we are is that we are a very ops-driven and ops-begun organisation. The way the company started was really we know how to run our own business. We run all our own ranges. We have all our own warehouses. We all have all our own logistics companies. But that's a whole company in itself, right? Running ranges, building products to make sure that m and process, maintenance and repair processes are done on time, making sure that we have the right ERP for the logistics offices, making sure that we uh, get all the license plates changed over, right? So there's a company essentially called Tier Ops, right? And they are a customer of mine. Because I need to make sure that we can take their service, which is people moving around cities, making sure that vehicles are safe, making sure they're in the right place, making sure they're not, you know, tipped over footpaths as much as possible. And that is a customer, right? Because they're providing us a service. And then we have tier hardware, right? So some we could have a customer that's a hardware provider, but we do it ourselves. So what we do is we have this, this customer who provides vehicles to us. So we have multiple customers 
uh, in the tier marketplace. And you can build this out more and more and more. So if we go through this process, we have the city as a customer, the ops team as a customer, the hardware as a customer. That value is being provided through tier to our consumers. And our consumers are then absorbing that and then pushing the revenue back into the customers, right? So there's a reason why we can apply for more tenders. There's a reason why we can run more cities and expand more cities. And there's a reason why we can build more vehicles. We can uh, send more vehicles around the world is because we have this customer and consumer marketplace going on. So actually, if you think about it, everything really can be a marketplace. Take out the physical product side of things and think about just a, a local versus global, right? Anyone who has spent any time in companies that have moved past a startup phase always comes up against the conversation of local versus global. And it's a ridiculous conversation, right? It's a never a fun conversation. Um, and we really need to get past this, is something local or is it global? There's never a one or two answer to that, right? It's always a combination. It's either because you have built your infrastructure in a global way and you're trying to be local, but you know you can't get there yet because you need to create microservices, or you started as a local company and you set up different entities for different markets or something like that. And so therefore you're purely local and you need to change your infrastructure to scale globally. Now, marketplace works really well here because if you think about it and you think about your regions or your markets as customers and you think about your central functions as consumers, right, or the other way around, either way. Essentially, the central functions need to create a marketplace, right? Customers are the central functions. Central functions need to create that marketplace, the value in the middle through products or services. Products, yeah, okay, the product organization is building products that the regions can consume. But services as well, because also you've got customer care, they're providing a service. You've got marketing, they're providing a service. You've got legal and finance and, and other teams all providing services to be in a marketplace so that the regions can consume them and realize the revenue that these products and services can create. So actually, if you think of everything through this lens of, okay, let's just put this marketplace in the middle. What are the products and services that sit in there? The customers are where we're getting those products and services from. The consumers are the people that are consuming or we're selling those products and services to. Um, and you can actually apply this model across pretty much every single business that I've ever seen. So really what we're saying here is that you have this one picture and you can apply it pretty much anywhere. So you can apply it to a classifieds business and there are products and services with your customer. Um, they're providing that through a marketplace, which is essentially providing a value enhancement, right? So we're making it better to sell your products and services to the consumer. If the marketplace is not providing a value enhancement, then they're probably not doing their job and your customers will turn away and find another way to sell their products. So really you need to be that value enhancement side of things. And the consumers are then loving the product, ideally, and pushing revenue back through your marketplace into your customers. Like I said, remember, you can also apply this to having no external customers. The products and services are your central functions. The consumers are your sales functions. Sometimes they're the regions. Sometimes they're a sales business. They're then consuming that and pushing revenue back through. And so you can think about this in any way possible. But this has really helped me to think about how to set up teams as well. So one of the things when I came to Tier, we had one product team right? Not one team, but like just one group of people who were just building everything that we needed to build. And the very first thing I did was split that into a team that focused on city product and a team that focused on consumer product. And as we've grown over the last, I've been there for 12 months now, we've actually started to be a bit more sophisticated about that, not just city and not just um, consumer, but really pulling it out into those, okay, what are the teams that are building the products and services and what are the teams that are building the value enhancement piece so that the consumers can really enjoy those products. So it's a really great way to think about businesses and if you've worked in marketplaces before you'll understand kind of a lot more about the commercial mm. product strategy that's associated with building things like a marketplace because if you consider everyone your customer 
internal teams as well, you really think about the value that you're providing to them very differently. So I highly recommend you take this uh, very simple model and I hope that I've been able to give you a number of examples as to how you can apply this to different types of businesses. Um, and then you can maybe see that everything can be a marketplace. Um, it doesn't have to look like it on the surface, but it's certainly something that helps from a mindset perspective and it really helps from a structure perspective as well. So thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, I know there's a couple of minutes left, so you can type them into the chat and Kevin will let me know what they are. But thanks for listening. Okay. No questions. <laughs> See you later.